Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tanmay Bandari and I scored an All-India rank of 817 in this year's NEET PG and in this video, I will tell you how to balance internship with studying for NEET PG and uh, you know, do justice to both of these things. So uh, like I want to start by saying that um, NEET PG requires four to six months of dedicated preparation provided you know what you're doing. A lot of people take time in figuring out what to do, what strategies to do and how to start. But if you have the right strategies, trust me, this is not like NEET UG. You've studied during MBBS and you have a good grip over MBBS subjects. If you've even manage to pass like it's fine and trust me like if you you know if you aim for the stars like even if you miss you'll hit the moon so that's the quote going in so even if you don't crack need pg during your internship attempts uh, there are five exams that you have to give two need pg and three inict exams so like you know this is this could be your first exam and if you give your first uh, real exam with proper intention proper feel like instead of starting from zero for the next exam you'll already be starting at 30 to 40 percent of your prep which is a very good thing and it'll give you a huge head start because like on the exam day a lot of things can go wrong but uh, like need pg and this entire you know system gives you a lot of opportunity to correct that and uh, like there are five exams so even if something goes wrong on the exam day you have other exams to cover up so like so it's better to cry in residency than to cry for residency because the residency is gonna be hell uh already so and like you want to be done with residency and all of these things as soon as possible so that you can really start working in the real world uh trying to build a practice that you like and live a life of your choice not bound to any college or not bound to any course and actually practice medicine in the way that you want to practice it so like you know that is there so um like i just want to say like if you are in any point of your internship right now like if you think like things are out of hand and can I crack me PG if I start now? Like if I say no, will you stop trying? If there's a year left for your PG and I still say no, you can't crack it. Will you stop trying? Will you never try to study for your PG? No, right? Then like what people say does not matter because the baseline is the same. Even if you study really well, the worst that could happen is like, you know, the outcomes are same. Even if you study or if you don't study, the best thing that could happen is that you could crack the exam, maybe by luck, maybe by probability, whatever it is. Or the worst thing that could happen is that you could not crack, the, you will not crack the exam. So every single day that you study, every single MCQ that you solve, every single GT that you give brings you one step closer to cracking the exam or it increases your probability of cracking the exam even if it's not need pg it could be november i and i so like don't be disheartened like always have the intention of cracking the exam uh another thing i want to say is that we had put rotations like we had fought a lot with residents so you really need to convince residents that you know uh, as long as the work is done uh they should be okay with it. So instead of all the people going to work every single day, we rotated people and at least one or two people could get off uh, and they would get time to study. Uh, so like once a week or twice a week, you were off and you were actually able to study and your other, uh, you know, uh, batchmates or your people from your group or posted in the same unit as you would cover up for you. So always ask JRs if you can rotate. And, you know, when you do that, also make sure that you are doing your job properly. Uh, if, if that does not happen, like, there's no point. And even if that's not the culture in your college, maybe you could be the first person to start something like that. So, um, you know, another thing, if you are watching this before your internship starts, like, uh, start as early as possible like the break after your final exams is crucial if you're a final year wo uh, student watching this don't waste your break anticipating the results or just enjoying use that break to cover your first and second year subjects uh, choose wisely and give a baseline GT giving a baseline GT is very important um, so uh, like at whatever point you are in your uh, internship like please give a baseline gt because that is where you start 
and that is your starting point um another thing that i wanted to talk about is that uh, when uh, like eat the frog prioritize whatever is important to you is your internship more important to you or is your neat pg exam more important to you most of the days your neat pg will be more important to you so like attack your neat pg related preparation related stuff first thing in the morning when you are well rested and you have 100% of your energy levels because once you go to internship and when you come back you're probably left with 10 to 30% of energy so um like you can't study that well on power saving mode like you can't perform the best on power saving mode so always study first and never sacrifice sleep like i would not do insanely crazy stuff like wake up at 5 am and things like that but i would wake up at 6 to 7 am like any time around that whenever my body woke up naturally and i would study because sacrificing sleep does not make you more productive because when you sleep like your neural connections and your synapses enhance and you remember better another thing i want to talk about is micro studying or studying in the cracks because every small effort every single step you take towards the exam helps you uh and uh, like you know every single mcq that you do in your free time instead of scrolling a reel every single anki flash card that you do instead of you know uh, gossiping with your uh, colleague or your co intern every single uh, gt question that you review instead of going on endless tea breaks will move the needle for you and it will definitely help you in your prep and it will keep you very intentional and very focused towards your prep so like that is one thing and for those who were are asking about anki and if they start anki right now even if there's very less ex- uh, time for the exam so i would just uh, try to you know make it as simple as possible for you so instead of you know re- using anki to replace anything just use anki as a supplement if you're studying for 3 4 hours every single day just use anki for 30 minutes where you try to actively do flash cards actively try to recall information and put that into spaced repetition what that will do is that your you are not relying on anki to complete a particular subject but you are using anki to help you memorize that particular subject or a few points from that subject not even if uh, that subject not entirely or not in particular so you don't need to complete anki per se but you can do anki whenever you are free or whenever possible just to fill the void of time because anki does not require internet every single flash card can be done easily within 20 seconds ideally uh, like i used to do flash cards uh, 8 to 10 seconds per flash card so you don't have to change your strategy as well so that is the ideal thing to do so you pick up any subject i would suggest you pick up your stronger strongest subject to start off uh, with anki and then do flash cards randomly you don't expect that anki will you know have all the points that are there in your notes or you will use anki to memorize your entire notes or you will expect that i have studied this subject from this particular source so i want anki which is specifically anki flash cards or this deck to be specifically made from uh, you know uh those notes so you are not expecting anything like that you are just trying to study uh things uh, related to the exam from anki and as many points as possible you're just trying to actively recall it without putting any pressure uh, on yourself and on the resource so uh, that is one point and for whoever uh, you know even if anki feels really complicated to you you can just leave it out no issues no point in getting into the fomo but this is an alternative that i said and if you don't know what anki is then you can watch other videos of mine where i explain and i decode what anki is so or you can jo- join this telegram channel where i have upro- uploaded all of my anki decks so moving on to the next point and again i would like to be more specific here that you know uh, the kind of work that you choose to do because internship is completely team work you are working with your co interns so the kind of works that you prefer to do also says a lot because like most of the people don't like physical labor don't like physical work for example if someone was asked to do paperwork and sit in the ward and just do paperwork plan discharges fill out lab forms and things like that people would prefer that but i personally would prefer for taking patients for scans uh tracing reports and uh getting blood from the blood bank because like i didn't actively have to do anything out there like the work was done by other people i was just 
you know, uh, the mediator or the majdoor or the mule who was carrying all the stuff and who was coordinating all the stuff. So, which meant that during doing all of this cut work, I could easily study and I could easily do Anki flashcards because if you're writing notes, if you're uh, filling forms, like you can't actively study while doing that, but <laughs> while walking to the lab, while sitting, while waiting for your patient's report, you can easily study. One more thing I want to say is that I will make a separate video on GTs, but GT is your accountability partner. Like GTs completely gamify your preparation that, you know, I gave my baseline GT and I cheated. Like I got hundred corrects, uh, but actually I would have got 40 to 50 corrects. But you know, the best part about GT is that they highlight your weaknesses very evidently. They keep you on track. Like if you know that you have to give a GT at a certain point of time, like it gives you like, you know, a deadline because need PG is too far of a deadline uh, to, you know, give yourself instead of that, you're giving yourself many deadlines and finishing things and topics during that period of time. And if you want to make your own strategy or if you want to, you know, watch a video on strategies, I've made that video as well. So hyper analyze your GTs and review it, them at work instead of, you know, doing anything else. Another thing uh, that I want to suggest is the Sunday lockdown. So Sundays are not holidays. Uh, Sundays are the days where you a sleep well. And second, uh, most important thing is that, you know, Sundays are more important when it comes to studying any big thing that you want to cover, any major topic you want to study, anything. So hyper plan your Sundays in advance so that you study for six to eight hours continuously. And then you can basically chill on the Sunday evening if you want, but like really use your Sundays to the best. Another thing is that, you know, this exam is difficult because there are two and a half lakh people who gave the exam this year, but only like there are, you know, how less seats there are. So like everyone wants a top rank, but no one wants to give up everything. I didn't meet my friends for almost a year. I quit the gym because it didn't align with my goals. Like this is what I'm saying. Like everything has to align with your goals. For example, if you want to be fit and if you think like, you know, fitness is really important to you. If you go to the gym, you'll all, all you know, you'll tire yourself out already. You're working 10 to 12 hours every single day. On top of that, if you work out like intense physical act activity, you'll have to rest a lot and you won't have the energy or the time to study. So instead of that, while studying, you can go on study breaks uh, or walking breaks or do light exercises like neck stretching and yoga, which actually aligns with your goals. Like if you you know, have fancy morning routines like wake up, uh, go for a run, shower, meditate, journal, etc. Like instead of that, you just wake up and study. And uh, like while studying, whatever study breaks you get, you do all of those things. Like, like everything has a time and place. So prioritize studying first. And whenever you take a study break, you do all of those things. So I'm not denying that you don't have to do all of those things, but those things supplement studying and they are not primary things and they are not a prerequisite to studying. So yeah. And oh, like a few more points that I wanted to discuss is that using postings as a study. So your words are your need PG, you know, guides. Because um, like if you go to the OT, you can clearly uh, instead of, you know, you if you are deep into your need PG preparation, you know what you need to see. Like your mind only knows, uh, your eyes can only see what your mind knows. So when you go into an OBGY, OT, whatever, what would you see? Like you would be interested in the steps of a surgery or things like that. But I was more interested in understanding the laparoscopic anatomy. I was more interested in, you know, uh, understanding suture materials and what suture materials were used. And I was under, more interested in understanding instruments other than before you uh, learn the fancy stuff. It's very important to 
know the basics and the things that are tested in the exam and whatever you see in person whatever you learn in person you never forget so even when i would go to casualty or things like that i would actively ask questions uh, with respect to my neat pg prep keeping my neat pg prep in mind and discuss it with the residents because residents are also curious in teaching and learning and uh, sharing things with you just they need to understand that you are curious enough so that is another thing um also like you know uh, another thing i want to share like this specific thing related to this particular point is that um when i was posted in the medicine icu there was this patient who came and who had nystagmus so the jr just asked me ki tum log sirf kaam karte rehte ho abg sampling uh, tracing karte rehte ho kabhi patient ko dekha hai look at this patient and tell me what's wrong with him uh, and he didn't uh, say that to a lot of my co interns because earlier when i used to go for my postings i would actively ask my resident questions about venti settings about what's wrong with patients like i would actively ask him questions and discuss things with him so he also felt like you know this student is interested and he should showed me this case and he showed me this patient with phenytoin overdose and this exact question about phenytoin overdose was asked in my ini ct so like your examiner is standing in the ward and uh, making questions and he is not you know going through textbooks to make questions for you is another thing that i want to say so whatever you do right now will help you out um uh <laughs> like also like i this is very cringy but i want to talk about mindset and belief because like if you believe in yourself you will put in the work if you believe that you can get a top 100 rank uh, you will actually put in the work to get that top 100 rank i believe that i could get a top 1000 rank i really convinced myself that you know you can get a top 50 rank i tried to convince myself but i could not convince myself that you know i can get a top 50 rank because it was just in my head like it was a limiting belief of mine seeing that you know these people have been studying before me they've studied so much they are still studying people have lighter internship there are seniors who are pre- sitting at home preparing and studying for 12 to 14 hours every single day how can i even come closer to them how can i compete with them and they deserve this seat more than i do and all of these limiting beliefs really hampered my prep but you really have to believe in yourself and you can have to believe that you can crack the exam in a certain point or uh, in your internship and believe is different than manifestation like belief means that you are actually putting in the work whereas manifestation is you just think about it and you really want it but you don't actually put in the work i might be wrong here but this is how i think about these things and you just have to put in the work and you have to believe that every single thing that you are doing is going to land you to whatever your dream is and whatever your goals are and it is going to help you achieve those goals so that is all i wanted to say about internship and i'll If you like this video comment what other videos you want me to make the next video will probably be about my smart gt strategy and i'll see you guys in the next one peace